You've probably used Graphical or GraphQL Playground at some point to make GraphQL requests. But what if I told you there was another way? Insomnia is an API design platform and API client that works with GraphQL. Insomnia is open source and offers a subscription service for teams to share and collaborate on designing APIs with Swagger and share requests to APIs. It also has a huge collection of plugins that make working with Insomnia and your team much easier. When you first load Insomnia, you will get a collection of projects on your dashboard. You can choose to create a new request, a new collection, or you can import. Let's open the existing project that I have. First, we'll take a look at the environments. Environments allow us to specify environment variables that you can use within requests. So similar to .env, I can abstract the endpoint and cart ID and any other variables that I want to share across different requests into a environment. I can choose to create a public or private environment. Private is only accessible to you and a public is accessible to anybody that is inside of your Insomnia team. So let's copy the values from the graph CDN environment and we'll change the endpoint to api.carql.com. If you're following along and you have your own API, feel free to customize the endpoint that we have here and all of the queries here on out. We can also assign a color so this is easy recognizable when we are switching between the different environments within Insomnia. On the left is where we have all of the folders that houses all of the requests that we create and save. If we choose to create a new folder for our queries, we can create this inside of an existing folder and we can rearrange and organize that and move it up and down the tree. Let's go ahead and create our first request. I'm just gonna call this get a cart. I'm gonna say this is a post request and then from the type, I'll choose GraphQL query. Now, if I type control space, I can choose from the environment variable endpoint. Then I'm gonna write a query using that variable. Here I have a query to get cart by ID. I pass in the ID as a variable and I can then return anything I like that is on the query. If I scroll down to the query variables and create a new variable object, I can then say that the ID here is equal to that environment variable. If we run this query, we can see the response status code the time it took and the size in the right hand side. As well as using the environment variables within queries, you can also use the helper utilities from Insomnia to generate things such as a UUID or a image URL from a plugin. And in this case, we'll be using the Faker plugin to generate a image URL. So let's transform the mutation to accept some variables and for the values of the variables we can use insomnia to define the uuid and this will come by default as part of insomnia and that will generate a version 4 uuid using the faker plugin we can also include a image url then if we go ahead and update the query to return the cart id the cart item id and the images for the cart item You'll notice every time that we run this mutation, a new item will be added to the cart. This is because we are sending a unique UUID with every mutation. You can also add headers to your requests by clicking header inside of the tab for each request. You can also use the environment variables here if you have a shared authorization token. Here we have a response of our cart that has items. If I wanted to get all of the items, I can filter the re results by typing $.data.cart.items and we see an array. You can also go a step further with this. You can get all of the cart items by a particular field and value. So here we'll get all of the items where the unit amount is greater than a variable that we send in. And in this case, we'll just choose 10. Then we can go a step further and just return the name of all of those items. This is really powerful. You can also choose to refresh and automatically fetch any schema that happens from the remote schema endpoint. You can also use the built-in documentation explorer, just like you would inside of Graphical or GraphQL Playground. We can explore all of the types, descriptions, see what's nullable, non-nullable, and much more. We can also choose to generate code to make a request to the endpoint. This will take in everything from our request, including the headers, and we can choose to make this request and generate code for Node, Go, Rust, Ruby, and much more. We can also preview the response headers, cookie, and the timeline of events. And like I said earlier, if you log in, all of your users on your team can view all of these requests, responses, and share this, and make developing and working with APIs much faster. 
Don't forget, if you want to go back and replay any of your previous requests, you can do so and view the responses that happened at that time as well. So from the drop down at the top right, you can choose to also delete the current response and clear your entire history.